today's how-to, I showed you how to clean and tidy Excel data using functions like VLOOKUP. Now, in this one, I want to show us how to summarize data to prepare it for visualization using something called pivot tables. Now, in the previous how-to, we were looking at a spreadsheet of diffid flight data from 2011. So, all the places that uh, staff from the UK Department for International Development flew in 2011. Now, we have this data, but we might have a few questions when it comes to telling a story, to visualising data. One question might be, what country did different staff fly to most frequently in 2011? Another question might be, what percentage of flights are on British Airways? Or a more complicated question might be, how much money did the average economy class between London and Dubai cost different staff in 2011 compared to the cost of the average business class flight? Well, luckily we have pivot tables that can help us to answer that question. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to select all of the data and then on a Mac to insert a pivot table, you would go to the data tab and select pivot table. On a PC, it's under the insert tab. So you'll see that that creates a blank pivot table. Now, the first question that we have that we wanted to answer was, what country did different staff fly to most frequently in 2011? Now, to do that, we just need to find our field name, and this pulls from the different columns on our previous spreadsheet, that was destination country. Destination country, we can just drag down into the row labels, and you'll see here a whole list of all of the countries, all, let's see, 144, if you count blank ones and things, um, that different staff flew to in 2011. That's helpful, but it doesn't quite answer the question. We need to know the number of times. So again, we're going to drag that same one there, destination country. We're going to drag it into the value box, and we say it's a count of each of these countries. And we can now see 52 for Afghanistan, 36 times to Antigua and Barbuda, etc. To quickly find the most, what we can do is we can go click here, our first row of data, and then sort it from A to Z, or Z to A really in this case, and we can find out that the United Kingdom is the country where different staff flew to most in 2011. Now, this might seem contradictory, but it is worth noting that DFID have a number of field offices around the world, and it does make sense that they would be coming back into London or the UK every once in a while um, in order to uh, have meetings at headquarters, for example. But if we want to think about the first one outside the United Kingdom, the answer would be the United States. As for our next question, what percentage of flights are on British Airways? What we need to do is we need to do something very similar to what we had before, and we need to drag the airline into the row label and airline into the value box. Now, in this case, this just gives us a count of the number of times that different staff took each airline. So, for example, we have uh, Aegean Airlines, different staff took it twice in 2011. But our question was on percent, not on count. Now we could add extra formulas here, but why don't we just go in and um, instead of choosing count, well actually that's okay, what we, but you'll note that there are lots of different things that one could include here. So everything from sum, that wouldn't matter much for something like the number of items in a row, but um, if you have the price, for example, which we'll come to in the next question, having the sum might be really useful. But what we also can do is you notice that there's an options tab here and instead of showing just the normal, what we can select is we want to show it as the percentage of total. And we can select OK, and we can see that it goes automatically updating into percentages. And if we look closely, we see that in British Airways comprised 32.2% or so of all different flights in 2011. As for the final question, how much did the average economy flight between London and Dubai cost different staff in 2011 compared to the cost of the average business class flight? Here, things get a little bit more complicated. What we need to do is we need to create a number of row labels and filters 
as well as some column labels and um, some special tricks with our values. So the first thing that we want to look at is the departure city. Uh, so we want to know from London. So if we pop in departure city into our builder, we see it gives us lots of different things. Now, we can, just really quickly, um, if we click this filter icon here on row labels, instead of selecting all, we scroll down and select um, London only. Now what we want to do is look for Dubai, so we need to pull in the destination city. Now you can actually pull that into the row labels and you'll see it now appears below London. So these are all of the places that somebody flew to from London. So if you wanted to filter that by destination city, again we wouldn't select all, we would only want to select Dubai. When it comes to column labels, one part of this question is about the class of travel. So why don't we pop that in our columns? Now here we have class of service right here at the top, of course. We're going to pop that into the column label. Finally, we want the cost of booking, and if we drag that into our values label, uh, we'll see right now that this is just the count. So we know that they've taken 35 business trips between London and Dubai, 100 economy, and 5 premium economy. But that's not what we want, so again we click our information there and we say the average. And we can now answer a question, and we can see that in 2011 the average business class flight cost £1,468, while the average economy class flight between London and Dubai cost £444. Now, this particular question is probably not very uh, useful or, or very surprising, really. We expect that a business class flight would cost more than economy, but it might be useful in a time series data, for example, when we compare 2011 to 2012 to 2013 and see how prices change. So there we have it. That's how you use pivot tables to help us answer some of our important questions, and then we can get on to actually visualizing them.